So I want to highlight just a couple concepts about engine control as we finish up here. And these are concepts that we've already seen in, in different ways, but it, it's worth coming back to to make sure we really understand, especially in the context now that we kind of see some of the mechanisms of what that governor was doing. So again, that we, we talked about this governor mechanism and how there's this balancing act between the, the fly weights that, that move out the faster the engine goes, and those are balanced against the spring force on that governor governor spring and, and so forth. And so we kind of got this concept of how that governor is trying to maintain an engine speed. And again, when we go back to this torque versus speed curve, that's this straight part of the curve out here on the right. That's where that governor is able to control the engine speed. Now we do have a way to quantify the performance of a governor to really understand if it's a good one or a bad one or how, how well it performs, how tight it is, if you will. And we talk about the governor droop. And we've already looked at this number before, but governor droop so the governor droop is how far that how much speed change there is from when the governor is is completely closed down as slow as it can go so basically no power demand on the engine to where it is wide open so where I've I've done all the control I can with the governor it can't do any more and it, it, the engine's now taken over and it's torque control in the engine so it's basically how much the speed changes as the engine goes from this point right here maximum speed no load so the throttle plate is closed or the fuel flow is closed to that engine and as we load it up, the throttle opens, throttle opens, throttle opens, throttle opens until we get to the point where it is at, at a maximum. It's a wide open throttle. That's all the governor can do to me. So how much does the speed change from there? So again, if we look at this example and these numbers, so, and this graph is kind of small, but let's look at this number here. Here's my wide open speed with no load. And that looks to me like it's probably about 2,450 RPMs, maybe that's what I'm guessing at it. So that's what I put down, 2,450 RPMs. So that's how fast that engine is moving at that point with no load on it. Now I put some load on it, then the governor tries to respond and react. And you know, as I do that, the, gov the engine is still gonna slow down a little bit. The governor's gonna work hard to control that speed, but there is gonna be some speed variation. So if I go back here to the shoulder point, which they've labeled B here as where that, that governor stops, and I draw a vertical line down, so I'll draw a vertical line down here. And again, this graph is kind of small, so it's kind of hard to tell. But I was guessing that that speed there was about 2,390. So and we may argue about that. Somebody might read that a little bit different or whatever, but, but I, that's what I guessed at it is 2,390 RPM, okay? So what is the droop? So if I calculate the droop then, the droop is going to be equal to, for this engine, the droop is equal to 2,450 RPMs minus 2,390. So subtract those numbers, 2,450 minus 2,390, and that gives me 60 RPM is my governor droop. So what that's saying is, hey, from the maximum speed to wide open throttle to where the governor is, that's all it can control. It's out of range, it can't do any more. That's going to be a 60 RPM change. That's what the governor droop is. Now, why is this important? It's a number we quantified or whatever. Well, here's an interesting thing, and we'll come back to this a little bit more later on, but at least I want to show you a little bit. If we look up the performance curve, the torque or performance curve for the engines that we're using in the lab, the little Briggs and Stratton snowblower engines. This is the torque curve that you'll get. The first thing you look at that and say, well, that doesn't look like the torque curve I'm used to because I don't see this governor control out here. Well, this is actually a torque curve without a governor. So this is saying if there's no governor on that engine, this is how that engine would perform. So there's basically nothing limiting speed. So they, they just check the, the torque at, at different speeds all the way up until I guess the engine blows up or something, I don't know, but they, they have some limit up here. But basically there's no governor control on this. And as a, a designer, an engineer, or somebody that's selecting an engine for a certain operation or a certain application, I can decide where to put the governor. So the engine does have a governor, and when we use it, we'll have a governor that's going to be going to be operational. But I decide where to put the governor. 
on there. So if I have an, an application, let's say that I'm building a log splitter, for instance, that has to drive a hydraulic pump, and that hydraulic pump wants to run at 3,200 RPM. So that hydraulic pump is going to operate right here at this point, at 3,200 RPM. That's where it wants to operate. So that's where it's at maximum power. So that's where I want my engine to be at maximum power when it's loaded down, when it's working hard, when I'm splitting a piece of wood or whatever, that's where I want that performance point to be. So how do I get it there? Well, I have to know something about that engine. And let's say that if I that look up the specifications, let's say for this engine that the droop is specified to be 50 RPMs. So they, the manufacturer will tell me, ah, your droop is 50 RPM. So what that tells me is that if I want this thing to be operating at maximum power here, that's with the governor, the throttle wide open, the governor at its max, governor max, then I have to start higher. How much higher do I have to start? 50 RPMs higher. So what that means is at 3,250 RPMs right here, 3,250 right at this point, that's going to be my maximum speed for that engine. So when I get this engine and put it in that application, I'm going to adjust the speed, adjust that governor on that engine so that it runs at 3,250 RPM. That way when I start splitting that log and I get up to the maximum power, it's going to get up to that 3,200. Now, if I put that curve in there and I hide this part of the curve, now that looks like my torque speed curve that I saw before because I added the governor piece onto it and I needed to know something about the droop to be able to do that. So we'll get more practice with that, but at least give you an idea of, of how we can specify these things. So I can choose that governor location at a lot of different places and actually change the shape of that torque speed curve a little bit. I can't change the top, but I can change what the governor is going to be doing at different points along that curve. So that's why droop is important. That's something that we need to look at. So let's summarize what we've talked about with governors. Again, we go back to the function of the governor and the main function that you need to understand is that it maintains the speed of the engine. That's its main job. That's what a governor does. In some ways it will limit the maximum speed and that's kind of a lot of times that's just the nature of the beast because if I set the maximum speed it's going to keep it from getting above that speed. And so there is some speed limiting in there, um, but that, that is what the governor does. Um, again, I take some exceptions to this statement that your book gives that it limits both the high and low speed because the governor often does not have anything to do with that idle speed, with the no load speed, but is basically just controlling and trying to maintain some speed that we have set. And again, we have a couple different types of governors. We've spent a lot of time looking at centrifugal and the air vane governors, the mechanical types that are typical of small gas engines. Uh, on older, large engines, they will have a mechanical type governors on them. But a lot of our newer engines, even some of our newer small engines, uh, will have electronic governor systems on. Again, just a sensor electronic sensor to measure speed goes into a little computer it decides whether the engine is too fast or too slow and then it sends a signal to some other electronic actuator that will open and close the throttle plate or open and close the injector pump to get more fuel less fuel in the engine and so forth so that's governors that's a summary of what we looked at and what we talked about um, so hopefully this helps us get our heads wrapped around and understand how they work